Alonzo House was, was was my second home down there. When I had the limousine and shit, me and Alonzo used to go to Paradise Street. Night 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 yeah, yeah. We, we hey, have a ball. <laughs> <laughs> I just, hey. I just told him the story already. Goddamn it! Oh, you, you told me about that. I told him about you didn't even <laughs> hit your goddamn shoes in your hand and limousine on two wheels hit the car. <laughs> nigga would lean in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a trip though. But um, yeah, man, and, and so so anyway, when after that um, Dre had auditions and and that's when Candyman and TNT came into the pitch track. Cause they was a group called the Busy Boy Posse, so I I signed them on my label, King Quality Records, as a group. But then they broke up, shit, two days later. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I, I told Candy, man, let's do this. Let's, let's do. I still work with you. So we go back to Dre, and Dre started working on Candy Man. We did like three songs, and and in the mix of the three songs, NWA had to start popping, they got a deal and they was finna take off. So Dre didn't have time. He's like, look, man, I gotta focus on, on NWA now. Um, but really it was easy ease out. Uh, he said, I gotta focus on this and I ain't got time to you guys. So luckily, um, I was cool with Ice T and Islam. I would remember Ron Simpson and all that. Islam owed me some money too. So me and Islam hooked up. I sold him some equipment one day. I, I had a lot of equipment, dude. I was. I, I, did you sell him? Did you sell him my, my FP twelve hundred drum machine case? No, no, no. I did my for you? I, I don't know how he got that. I sold him a. I sold him a, a twelve a four track. Okay. I bought the twelve track from you. Right. I bought that. I bought that twelve track from you. I sold him a four track. You remember DJ Black? Right. 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 DJ Black, I bought some turntables and shit from DJ Black. That was my partner when he used to work at the fish market. Okay. Right? When he first came to LA, he wow. used to work at, um, at the fish market on Avalon. Come and get it, fresh fish. To his, his, uh, but his daddy in law's shop. Uh, but yeah, so yeah. that's, um, and so we went to Lonzo, I mean, we went to African Islam and we did Money Talks. That was the yeah. first single I did on Candyman, Money Talks. Yeah. And then, and I said we we use Ice T Studio time. That's why if you look on that album when I did that Money Talk, I I said Ice T co-produced it because he gave me he let me I used the studio time because he's one of these money. And uh, then from there, when did Johnny J come in the picture? Johnny J, okay, that's on the tape. From there, after we did the the Candyman single, TNT came to me and said, he said, Peter, man, you know I don't mess with Candyman no more, but uh." You still want to fuck with me? I was like, yeah, bro, I told you, I like your style. So come on, I'll, I'll put you out as well. So I took him and put him in the studio. I said, well, what you got first? I said, well, bring something to me. And he, that's when he brought Johnny J. What he did is he brought a song. And I heard the song. The production was so fucking tight. I was like, man, who did the fucking music? I don't give a fuck about this rap. Who did the music? He showed Johnny J. I said, bring him to me. So he brought Johnny J to me, and I met John J. And John J had a DX drum machine that he had in his suitcase. Mm. I was like, "Okay, bro, come on here, and um, I'm gonna fuck with you. You wanna do some work?" And then we started doing music together. And then I went to New York, and um, I came back from New York, and I bought the SB1200. That's when it just came out. I bought the SB1200, and I was. Show Johnny how to work and say, Here, dude, they can learn to do and enjoy it. And he, he mastered that motherfucker, dude. And, and we started, we did, then we did, uh, <clears throat> we did Big Sykes first album. Big Sykes first album. Oh, okay. first album. Yeah, Evil, Evil Mind Gangster. That was Big Sykes first album before he even, you know, he did, what he do? We did that. We did Evil Mind Gangster. I still got a bunch of in cassettes. That's a trip. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> We did, we did Big Sight, then we did a bunch of other shit. And then um, I got a deal with fucking, um, got a deal with, um, what's, what's that motherfucking name? Ricola? Don McMillan. Don no, McMillan. No, no, Don, Don McMillan. Man. Got a deal with Don McMillan. And then he hooked me up with uh, another label. And then I put out a few, I put out, 
Then we we put out the Candyman shit, the TNT shit. Then we got to deal with that bitch. You know what I'm saying? We could have, man, we could have did so much more though with that. But uh, Johnny, Johnny, he just get, he got big headed. He didn't really want to work with uh-huh. no other artist. Oh, Vince just finally wanted to do shit with him. I was trying to get him to do shit with Ice. Ice T, he didn't want to do shit with Ice T in the beginning. He was like, I just want to focus on this candy and shit. Man, fuck all that, bro. You need to be, you know, grow wide and expand and do more. But he just wouldn't listen until it was too fucking late with for him, man. Wow. You know? All right. So y'all just heard from the mouth himself, my man, Fila Al. You all right, dude? Everything good with you? You know I'm always good, bro. Yeah, I know you're about to end the valley, the upper valley. Go ahead. Watch this. I'm gonna tell you the next thing to go check out. My son, my son, his name, his name is Berto the Mobster. Right now, he, he, he he's up and coming. He's doing his little thing. Berto the Mobster. Yeah, Berto the Mobster. He he just came back from he's doing his show in Japan. He's doing his thing. Spell, it out real quick. Spell, spell the first name out real quick so we can give him some love. B E R T O. Berto the Mobster. Berto. The monster, yes, sir. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm literally looking him up right now. Birdo the mobster. I'm gonna add him and we'll show him some love on my show because I do a lot of hip hop, uh, underground hip hop on my show as well. Okay, well, yeah, and then, cool, cool. Yeah, and then yeah. you can big up my, 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 my old, my other label. I still got a label, right here, there we yeah. go. Got him. Right now on, uh, Instagram. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Hey, Lonzo, we got to get him on the show because I know we just hit the the iceberg. Yes, sir. Let's do that. You want to see that? I'll call you back. We'll we'll do an interview with you, Doc. All right. That's what's up. Much love, man. Thank you, man. Stay strong. All right. Peace. All right. I love this show. That's why I love this man. I'm a hip hop. I'm the biggest hip hop nerd, Lonzo. And that's why I love this show because you're not going to hear that on anybody else's show. You're not going to press call and somebody who who started this shit is going to answer that's why you're the fucking legend dude that's why i'm the godfather motherfuckers uh, niggas talk that shit about me hating i couldn't be a hater if niggas still love me 40 years later man isn't that crazy man i get so i i, I try not I to can't be a hater dude comments. oh man I, I see some of these comments in the comment section sometime and i just have to say something like you just don't know who the fuck you're dealing with this guy lonzo man you had your hands on everything dude I had a I, I got into a debate with somebody online a couple of weeks ago, man. They're gonna tell me about Easy E how I hated him. Or I was bitter, dude. I'm not bitter. I saw that. I'm like, come on, dude, dog. come on, man. Look, you know what? Here's here here's what people don't understand. When you know somebody before they were famous, and you know them when they're not around the people, you, when you come to the, you, they come to your house and sit in your couch and sit at your dining room table, and we sit there eating chicken and you know eating uh. Uh, church's chicken, or uh, we we like golden bird. We eat golden bird chicken, eat them goddamn uh, potato pies. Oh, yeah, yeah. we had, uh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I used to love them. And we go to Golden Bird Man or Popeyes or whatever. They sit and eat chicken and talk shit and be laughing at shit, man. And you know, you know, you, you know the person. You know them after they got famous. With me, they could take their mask off. They could take their motherfucking. You know, they take their shoes off in my house. Shit, niggas. My house got DNA all over this motherfucker. Okay, I need to get it sanitized like a fucking COVID COVID uh, room or some shit. But nonetheless, it's amazing that people who weren't, in some cases, weren't even born yet, will argue with you and tell you how you feel about something. 